But first, of course, the injury to Hangman Page. He was wrestling John Moxley in the main event of the Dynamite show. And he took a lariat, and in doing so, he took a flip bump and landed on his head and was immediately knocked out. And the referee went to check on him. He was clearly out, called for the doctor, stopped the match. The show uh, continued on because they still had several minutes of television time left, and so they basically had Moxley do a, a promo, and then MJF came out to set up the match for full gear, which we'll talk about later. But they got Hangman out of the ring, they took him backstage, they took him to the hospital, and he was diagnosed with a concussion. And at least as of right now, I suppose, you know, we could find out more in the morning, but it appears it was just a concussion, which is good news because it looks very scary when it happened. Yeah, there were um, people in the hospital with him, and, and uh, he's fine. You know, as, I mean, as far as aside from the concussion, it, uh, you know, I mean, so it may, you know, there's always a chance that something happens later, but it feels like they dodged a bullet and, uh, and that he'll be okay. You know, I mean, as far as, um, you know, he was, you know, uh, that was basically what I was told is that he's fine. So it, it was good because it did look pretty scary. And, uh, Paul Turner did a great job. I mean, and, and I've seen, we've all seen too many times or many, many times referees, you know, because the show must go on and, you know, you're the, the plans have to be executed as they were planned and things like that. And you, um, but he took no time. He saw that he was out and he stopped the match and it was, you know, it was not something that I'm sure Paige wanted and, you know, Moxley wanted or anything like that. Um, but it was the right thing to do. And, um, you know, I've, I've, several people have commented about it, you know, tonight and everything like that, but it was, um, it was, a, it was a very well done decision in, in a situation where more often than not in wrestling, they don't do the right decision in those situations and they just keep it going somehow and try to figure out a way through it without stopping it. And, uh, in its own way, um, I think that it's actually, there's a silver lining. I mean, if Paige is okay uh, soon enough, um, th because of the way the match ended, there's actually going to be a lot more um, uh, fan interest and fans wanting him to go for the title and be champion again, more than more than he had going in. So there is a silver lining, I think, you know, based on that. But of course, it was really, uh, you know, hard to. Uh, Hard to watch at the time and, and very scary. So the main event was Moxley and Hangman Page for the title. And a uh, few ironies here. We always talk about injuries and how, uh, you know, they can just happen on anything. And the almost the very first spot of this match was Hangman Page doing a moonsault off the balcony onto the cement. And he was unharmed. Unbelievable. When he was up there, I thought this is like... I saw Kota Ibushi do something from even bigger height when he did the thing on Kenny Omega at Budokan, which was insane. And I've seen, um, um, and he did it on, I think he did it on, didn't he do that to Ishii a couple of years ago too? I know he did, you know, in that match, that crazy match that those two guys had. But Kenny, I mean, um, Adam Page was like, like when he, when he went up there, it's like, it's a little too high. And he, you know what I mean? It's like, I kept thinking like he's going to land and he's going to, hurt his heel, you know what I mean? Something like that. Kind of like when Cody did that moonsault um, from that super high cage in Atlanta, and it looked so spectacular, and he got hurt doing it. And it was like, you got a whole match to go. You haven't even started the match. And he's fine. Well, the other irony is that uh, the finish, which ended up being the finish, where he was hit with the lariat, did the flip bump, land on his head, and got knocked out. The very first spot on this show... The very first spot in the trio's title match was Pac throwing a lariat, and actually, I don't know if he threw the lariat or took the lariat, but it was involving Pac, and it was a flip bump, and uh, nobody got hurt because well, we've seen a million. We've seen a million. Just flip never know what's going to happen. We've seen a million flip bumps, and very rarely does a guy get hurt on a flip bump. Yeah, but, but it it happened. 
He took and a lariat, just, landed on his head, and they stopped the match. And it was just starting to get real good too, which was uh, yeah, yeah. The, well, the match was of it. the match was really, really good yes. as it as it was going on. I mean, it they was had really many, good. they had several minutes left to go before, when this when right, this right, right. This was they, not the very end of the match. No, no, no. They had a couple minutes, and they did have their best stuff, and their you know, I mean, it was a big disappointment to both guys. I'm sure because, I mean, the one thing is, is when you go in there and you mentally have this match in mind. And, you know, you're out there and you're just, you know, the match is going great because it really was, you know, plus it's Moxley's home city. So that helps a lot, too. The match is going great. And then poof, you know, it's kind of like you don't accomplish what you set out to accomplish. But it's like, you know, stuff happens sometimes on live TV and, and you know, happens in pro wrestling. And it happened tonight, unfortunately. And, you know, in its own weird way, there's. There's ways that, uh, you know, there's always, if you, there's always, I can't say that, I shouldn't say that, that there's always a way for this, for something like this to be a silver lining. In this case, there can be a silver lining because I think that there will be um, people who, you know, if, if Adam had just had a, a great match and lost, which is probably what was going to happen, he's probably going to have a great match and lose. You know, it'd be like, well, you know, he had a great match with Danielson. He has a lot of great matches. We see so many great matches, people don't even remember them the next day. That's the reality of, of you know, this era of wrestling when, you know, AEW is, is just presenting so many great matches on television. But this people will remember. And in its own way, they're going to go in there, and it's one of those things where, I um, mean, it's so funny because I was literally yesterday morning talking about um, Inoki and Hogan with Chris Jericho. And, you know, the whole thing of um, the, the famous match they did in 1983. And, you know, Inoki lost, you know, because of the injury, you know, even though it was a worked injury, but everybody thought it was a shoot injury. But the whole thing was, is that Hogan should have won. But Inoki didn't, you know, if Inoki had just lost, he would have lost, right? Instead, the whole big thing was, yes, Hogan has the championship. So that's good. You know, Inoki has to chase. But the, but Inoki, you know, everybody was just so concerned about Inoki that that was like, you know, his, his coming back became a big story. So the whole thing here, you know, rather than he lost. So in this situation, I mean, you know, hopefully, you know, whatever plans they had, and I have no idea what they were to rehab Paige after losing, um, you know, you gotta, you may have to manipulate it because he, you know, number one, you know, it may not be, I mean, it's a concussion. You know, even though he's fine, the problem with the concussion is, is, you know, we don't know how long it's going to be. He might be fine. He might be fine Wednesday. He might not be fine in a month. You, you know what I mean? We just don't know because it's a concussion, but hopefully, you know, he will be okay and hopefully he can come back. And when he comes back, I think that there's going to be that there should be momentum because so many people saw this and and you know know it's real you know what I mean it's absolutely real um, I mean it, it almost in some ways I mean it's funny because um, when it happened you know there were people texting me thinking like this what a great idea you know he didn't have to do a clean job and now there's going to be all this stuff and it's like yeah but it it actually was real but it actually. If they had done this the way they did this as a scripted thing, I mean, it actually was not a bad thing. You know, even though you did not get the climax of the match and you did not get the match that those two guys wanted to deliver for you and everything like that, it's kind of like, okay, the story's changed, but it's not a disaster in that way if he's okay. And, and thank God, you know, it, it feels like, you know, the, the belief is he's okay. So afterwards, they, uh, they're they just kind of sitting there and trying to figure out what to do, and so they run down the Rampage and Dynamite cards, and then Taz is all concerned, and, and they give them they were like... All con- they were all concerned. Well, sure, but Taz is like... I mean, he's he's pretty worried there, and he's talking about it. Well, you know, Ta- Taz did have a broken neck, so yes. it, it probably hits, hits, hits him, you know, personally even more. And so then Moxley's essentially just told to do a promo, and so he cuts his promo saying that he hopes and prays Hangman can walk and talk again, play with his child, that's what's important. You have to have guts to get in this game and play this game, and he says since the Yankees didn't go long, well, we got some time left, MGF, get your ass out here. 
So MGF comes out. He's got his chip. He teases getting in the ring. So apparently it is like Money in the Bank. It is. It he is. gets in the ring, and he's about to cash in, but then he changes his mind, and he cuts a promo saying, you know what? I want you at 110%. No excuses. I'm cashing this thing at full gear. And he goes, for the first time in my career, I'm going to earn it. And uh, so, this so. was so great because at the end of the day, they now have two things that they can do here. Option A is he can earn it and just go babyface since he's getting cheered for every single promo that he cuts. Or he promises to earn it. And doesn't. And then not earn it. Yeah. And just uh, totally go full heel. So they've been walking the babyface heel line with him quite a bit. And so... Well, I, uh, I, 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 I know he doesn't want to turn. Well, I'm sure he doesn't. But at some point, it's like, well, if, are you going to keep fighting this? At, I mean, of, cor- of course, at some point, he's going to turn. he should turn. But right now, I think that they have a lot more um, over baby faces that he can draw money with than heels. You know, and again, he can be a heel and they cheer him. That's that's fine. I mean, you know, I mean, Ric Flair was like that his whole career. And I mean, and, and sometimes he should have been a baby face more, even though he always wanted to be a heel. But the point is, it's like, it's the dynamic, you know. If, I mean, he can he can be cheered and go against, you know, Moxley, Page, you know, and the, the list is endless of so many guys that he can be going with, Brian Danielson, you know. I mean, there's there's a lot of... There's a lot of matches for him as champion if he wins the championship. There's matches for, you know, all these different guys, um, no matter what, where they where they go with it. So, um, yeah, I, you know, again, and even whatever, he can fight, he can, you know, a world champion to me should should fight baby faces and should fight heels. In WWE, that's what they do. You, and, you know, whoever the people cheer for. That's fine. As long as it as long as the dynamic is there that people want to pay for tickets. I don't care if they cheer for both guys. I don't care if they boo both guys. I don't care if they boo the baby face. If they're paying for tickets and they're watching the TV, um, the crowd can do whatever they want. It's fine. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.